Good morning, Sunset Country. Welcome to the show. The day has finally arrived. Look at this, the Stanley Cup. I'm your host, Deborah Crookshank, and of course, I have my sidekick, Dave Kane, with me, and local hockey historian, Rick Brignall, who's going to talk to us about the hockey history with the Thistles. Dave, how excited are you? I am super excited. This is going to be an awesome day. We get to interview Lanny McDonald, Ron McLean, Don Cherry, see the cup. I got a press pass. This is awesome. We get to hear about the book. We got all kinds of stuff, more stuff happening today. It's going to be great. We have a little surprise for Don and Ron coming up, and we are also going to talk to Andrea Scheibler about a three-on-three -three hockey fundraiser coming up in our community. Rick, what are you looking most forward to today? I love talking about the Thistles. I love hockey, so it's a great weekend, and I, you know, I look forward to uh, the whole weekend ahead, you know, ahead of us. Well, we are so happy to have you on the show. Stay tuned, everybody. Maybe Nothing awesome. but excitement today. All right, for all those interviews, we're going to start the whole day talking to Rick about the Thistle hockey history. It's going to be great. Hi, I'm Rick Brignall at the Kenora Rec Center here to talk to you about Kenora's hockey history. And any conversation about Kenora's hockey history will, of course, start with Kenora winning the Stanley Cup in 1907. We are the smallest town to ever win the Cup. Um, and the significance of winning the Stanley Cup is the fact that it is the greatest hockey championship in the world. Nothing really compares to it. Boys dream about it. I dreamed about it. And in 1907, a, a bunch of Kenora kids went on to win the Stanley Cup. And the fact is that they weren't just a, this one-trick pony team. It was actually their third time challenging for the Cup. Um, they first challenged for it in 1903 and then again in 1907, I mean 1905, losing to probably one of the greatest first dynasties of hockey, the Ottawa Silver Seven. But in, in the West, Kenora was the greatest team and in 1907, they went on to win it. And part of the great part of that story is the fact that four of the players on the team, Kenora products, Kenora homegrown people, became in the future members of the Hockey Hall of Fame. So not only did we, you know, in Kenora think they were great, but also the world of hockey thought they were great. And they're Tommy Phillips, Tom Hooper, Billy McGimsey, and Cy Griffiths. Uh, probably four of the greatest, great players of that time period. But as I said, Kenora really wasn't a one-trick pony. We weren't, we shouldn't just be known as that. Because in Kenora, we've won probably won or challenged for every championship, teams from Kenora, every championship in North America and even the world. Uh, teams from Kenora have challenged for the Allen Cup, the senior championship. Teams from Kenora, the 1940 Kenora Thistles challenged, uh, were in the finals for the Memorial Cup final as junior champions. Um, in 1952, 53, Kenora, a team of homegrown guys, won the Western Inter Intermediate Championship um, and, then, and then went on to, to, to represent Canada uh, in a tour of Japan. Uh, we have people from Kenora who've won Olympic gold medals. Um, and these are just team championships. These are just team efforts. On an individual point, players from Kenora throughout the last 120 years have been going from Kenora and filling the, the lineups of teams across North America. Um, all the way back in the 19 teens, we have guys like uh, Wilfred Smokey Harris, who actually scored the first goal in Boston Bruins history. Uh, we have guys like Johnny Gallagher and Jimmy Ward, both players who grew up in Kenora, playing, playing hockey in Kenora and going on to play in the NHL, even winning Stanley Cups. Uh, Johnny Gallagher with the Detroit Red Wings and Jimmy Ward with the Montreal Maroons. Um, it's just amazing throughout. We, we are just kind of this hotbed. You know, they always talk about hotbeds for hockey and Kenora should always be considered one of them. Uh, when you go from the 30s, you go to the 1950s, we have a lineup of players who were some of the best players in the minor leagues in North America. We had Dennis Olson with the Springfield Indians. We had uh, Brian McClay in the International Hockey League. We had Stubby Dubchuk 
who would play in the International Hockey League. You know, scoring 50, I believe one year he, he scored 72 goals while playing in the International Hockey League. Uh, we had the Bailey brothers, Bob and John Bailey, playing uh, in the NHL. Um, during that time period, we had Gary Bergman. Anyone who watched the Summit Series in 1972, I wasn't old enough back then, but watching replays of it, he's like, there's always one memorable thing. There's two guys who were bald, and one of them was, was Gary Bergman. It's always a funny story with people in Kenora. But Gary Bergman represented Kenora on the national stage. And this just shows you can come down to the Kenora Rec Center, see this wall of some of, you know, just a, a part of the great players and teams in, in Kenora history, because we do have a large history. And with this isn't just showing just how great these players are, but it just shows that throughout the years, Kenora was an integral part in the formation of hockey and the evolution of hockey across Canada. We have none other than, I don't even have to say his name, everybody knows who he is, Lanny McDonald. Thanks for giving us the time. How's it going today? Oh my gosh, uh, we've had a great day already. A uh, couple uh, interviews. Uh, now we did the breakfast with the Cup. Uh, Scotiabank Hockey Day in Canada in Kenora is oh, going unbelievable. That's fat Kenora. Kenora, we won the Stanley Cup. Yeah, and you weren't playing for us then, though. No, I certainly no. wasn't. But when you look inside the cup, Kenora's name is front and center. It's pretty cool. That's awesome. And you are you are a legend. I'm going to tell you that if you don't know. Is that old? Oh, no. And, uh, no. Okay. But I understand that. You're, go you're, you're going down to a couple more schools today? We're going to a couple schools. Uh, we're going to a senior's uh, uh, home. And I can't wait to get there because obviously they can't get out. So to be able to go there and visit with them, I think it's fabulous. Oh, it is fabulous. They're going to love it. We love it. We love the fact that you're doing those things for us. But we need you to do a special thing for us. Uh-oh. We've got a little bit of a fundraiser coming up with yep. Triple Play. Yep. And we've got our Kenora dinner jackets. Oh, yeah. And we'd like for a few of the they legends so cool. like yourself to sign them, and we're gonna, they're going to auction them off. Love Would to. that be okay? I, I would be more than happy to. I'll, I see a nice red square here. Fantastic. We'll go right on there. And hopefully it raises some good dollars. Oh, I'm sure it will. How's that? That's fantastic. Awesome. So here we are at Good Morning Sunset Country, Hockey Day in Canada, starting off the day with, with wonderful Lanny McDonald. Thank you again, sir, for giving us a few minutes of your time. Have great. a great day. Great to be here. Thank you very much. Welcome back. I'm joined with Andy Scheibler now from the Lake of the Woods District Hospital Foundation and we're talking a little bit about local hockey action here. Yes. So the three on three hockey tournament, Andy, is a fundraiser for the hospital. What are we fundraising for? We are fundraising for the CT scan renewal program. So it's a, it's going to be coming in hopefully 2018 that is our hopes so uh fundraising money for that we already have a good head start this yeah. is going to uh, bump us up a little bit more providing we get a full list of teams and it's fun for everyone and lots of donations excellent well i'm sure you won't have a problem finding hockey fans so if people want to participate in the tournament when is it and how can they get involved all right, the tournament itself is April 5th to 9th, uh, so it's potentially five days of hockey, so that's exciting. If you 
want to register a team, you can email me, you can stop by and see us, visit our website, lwdhf.com, and all the details are there, novice to old timers, so six years old to 66 years old. And are we talking male, female, can it be mixed teams? Absolutely, mixed teams, or if you just want to have a all male team or all female team, I like the mixed teams, it kind of gives uh, the boys and girls opportunity to play together instead of against each other, although I think it is good too when there's uh, girls teams facing off against boys team in the same age because it's rivalry right yeah, there yeah. you go well if you want to get involved check out the website at the lake of the woods district hospital mm -hmm. and raise some money for our local T ct scanner thanks andy for your time today thank you for having me i don't even have to tell you who i'm with everybody knows welcome to kenora don much. cherry Appreciate it's fantastic it. having you here jacket for you that is an awesome jacket yes. I would look good in that jacket. That's awesome. Well, you don't anybody look good in that I jacket. I think so. <laughs> yes. So you're in Kenora. You've been here before. Been here before, and I drove up uh, from Winnipeg yesterday. And when we got into the woods, it reminded me of uh, Perry Sound. Beautiful woods and uh, beautiful sky. And uh, I tell you, this morning it's just great as we're doing this. It's a wonderful morning. You brought great weather with us. Now, you travel a lot with hockey. I don't have to say that. You know that. You can you, NHL is so big, everything's so big, and you come to these small towns. Well, uh, have, have they built hockey? Is, is that where hockey's coming well, from? We were, co we were coming through the, uh, and uh, driving through the town, and all we saw was signs. We must have saw a thousand signs, so we're, we're happy. I know Ron McLean loves coming here, and I do too. I mean, he's out uh, Saturday morning. He's out for nine hours, and so he, we get a big kick out of coming here. We really do. He, he goes every week to Hockeyville, but the only I go out maybe once, but this is... Uh, this is one of my favorite days. We've been doing it now, I think, for 20-some years now. It's uh, one of my favorite time. That's fantastic. Speaking of your favorite times, you've been around a lot. Is there, have you got a favorite moment in the world of hockey that you've seen or been around? What's well, a favorite moment? or one well, of your... My favorite moment was when I wasn't in the Na uh, National Hockey League. was when I was, uh, I was uh, Rochester Americans. We, were, we came to the Boston Gardens, and uh, we were, had a morning skate, and the Boston Bruins were practicing, and I'd never seen Bobby Orr in person and the and the first time i saw bobby Orr skate that was my favorite moment i mean i've won the collar cup and been in the finals and all that stuff the nhl but i think the favorite time that i ever had when i saw bobby Orr, first time i saw him skate uh, there's never been anybody close as uh, uh i would say was uh, uh maybe uh, uh pavel burry was as close as i think and uh, i tell you boy it was like heaven watching bobby Orr. so that was my favorite time that's what you knew he was going to be a somebody. Oh, he was already a somebody. He was already a somebody when he was 12 years old. So he's the greatest hockey player ever lived. Well, for instance, when I, he, last year he played for me, uh, really his last year, he had 46 goals, 89 assists, and he was plus 123 and 100 minutes in penalties. How could you beat that? That is fantastic. Now, before we end off, I know, I understand you have a little bit of a connection with Kenora, a name Dennis Olson. Dennis Olson, I played with him in Springfield, and I'll tell you a funny story, is that uh, Eddie Shore always seemed to like him for some reason. I never figured that out. And Eddie Shore was a Darth Vader of hockey back then. He's a bad guy. He really was. He's really a bad guy. Terrific hockey player, MVP four times. Nobody's ever done it in the National Hockey League, but a bad guy as a coach, as far as I was concerned. I don't think Dennis, Dennis liked him. He liked Dennis. So Dennis could go away for a lot, and uh, Eddie always thought he was a chiropractor. And I don't ask me why he could fix anything, crack backs and everything. And he used to, if you had a headache, he'd, he'd uh, crack your neck. And he'd grab, you by the, he'd grab you by the head, and he'd be pulling and yanking. And I think he used to pull, you know, pull and head, and he'd really hurt you anyhow. So we're before a game, Eddie was there, pull, and he said somebody had a headache. So he's pulling and yanking and pulling, pulling. And uh, Dennis piped up, and he says, Eddie, one of them's ever come off in your hands. <laughs> and... We all laughed, and, uh, but he could get away with that. And uh, Dennis used to talk about Kenora all the time, with a great fish that was up. In fact, he was a guide when he was up here, so I'm looking forward to meeting him. Oh, fantastic. That'd be great. I saw you a while ago on Hockey Night in Canada. You were wearing the Kenora hat you were talking yeah. about. And we've got a little something for you, Don, to oh. match your Kenora hat. This is oh, a K-Town right. jacket. It is. I yes. It's the same, uh, same pattern. Thank it's you the same much. pattern. Very nice of you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Got the Winnipeg jacket. You're very good. I'll wear this when I take blue for a walk. Excellent. Oh, Excellent. Thank you, thank you very well, much. Uh, it's our dinner jacket. So oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> because you are um, 
the man with all the fancy suits, we thought that you needed a K-Town suit. So well, this is courtesy of Island Girl, well, a local Island, business in town. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll wear it with pride with blue. That's Excellent. fantastic. We're taking a break, but when we come back to Good Morning Sunset Country, we're going to test Ron McLean's hockey knowledge. Welcome back. Joining us is Ron McLean. I, I don't think he needs any introduction to anyone across Canada. Um, as I was saying to someone before, hockey stars retire, but we always have, have Ron every Saturday night. So it's great. Welcome to Kenora. Thank you, Rick, and congratulations. You told me uh, Forgotten Heroes is one of the Bibles I use for research <laughs> in Manitoba or Northwestern Ontario. That was a great book that you did, and uh, I love that you love the game the way we all love the game, oh. I suppose. <laughs> Thanks. That was a true labor of love, and uh, thankfully I'm still married after it because I was in doing lots of research. So You know, let me tell you a quick story about that. Uh, we were in Edmonton doing the uh, Edmonton Oilers 1984 Cup reunion, and Wayne Gretzky and Mark Messier were arguing over what goes first when you retire, the hands or the legs? Mark felt your legs go, Wayne felt the hands go, and Paul Coffey stepped in and he said, no, the first thing that goes when you retire is the wife. And, <laughs> and he brought the crowd to uh, its knees, yeah, it was great. So, what's it like, you know, we've seen you, you're here for Hockey Day in Canada and you've been around town doing events. What's it like kind of being a rock star? You know, journalists usually are the people asking the questions, they're not the people being cheered on when they come into a auditorium or something. What's it like being a rock star? You know, Rick, you learn really early in broadcasting. I was in Red Deer when I started out and I would go and do the welcome wagon mm -hmm. dinner in March and then I would go and do something else. And uh, you kind of rose up to a level of being known. Let's not call it rock star, but a, a sort of grade Z level of celebrity. And and then you learn to get over yourself pretty quickly, right? Because uh, you were starting to think, oh boy, I'm, you know. Uh, and then I did it in Calgary, and then you do it at the Canadian or national level, and uh, you just realize Hockey Night in Canada, uh, you know, God, it's such a blessing to be a part of that telecast. Uh, um, that makes you, by definition, a companion or a friend of just about everyone in the country. And it's more that, right? It's not so much idolatry as just the idea that everybody feels they know you because you share in their love of hockey. And that's, that's what it is, and it's been great, really great here, like playing in the alumni game. Uh, at the rec center. Scoring with the Richards. first goal. Yes, but ten seconds. Lanny McDonald banked it off me, so I had no choice but to score it. It was off my stick before I realized. Uh, and seeing Matt and Mike Richards and seeing all these guys that played Muskies or Thistles hockey was just, uh, they were rock stars too, right, at one point, because yeah. uh, everybody connects through them. Oh, for sure. You are a student of hockey, so it's not uh, it's not something, um, it's something you, I, I believe you are into. So... Um, I guess you kind of have to in this job. But uh, I'm going to give you five questions. Don't worry if you don't get them. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, but if you do, that'll be great. But it, uh, these questions kind of illuminate just that Kenora isn't just a uh, Stanley Cup winning town or uh, Mike Richards' hometown. We have a, over 110 years of hockey history here. So here we go. Great, Rick. OK. Oh, yeah, you, you can see the answers yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, like this. Okay. I won't uh, how many times did the Kenora Thistles stand, challenge for the Stanley Cup? I believe three. Uh, yeah, so failed twice and then uh, triumphed. So yeah. the Ottawa Senators uh, got them, but they got the Wanderers, and then they lost to the Wanderers. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, 1903, 1905, and 1907. While you segued into my next question, I had to include a couple. Easy one. That one so is easy, yeah. Who, Thank you for that. Who did the 1907 Kenora Thistles defeat to win the Stanley Cup? So the Wanderers, and I think that's, you know, the, the story that Eric Zwag taught me that's the most amazing about it all is that they go down to St. Paul by train to catch the Sioux Line and catch, get their way over to Montreal, to biggest, richest city in the country. Mm -hmm. You've got all these men from the wilderness of, uh, and I mean, they're men from the wilderness, but they are Art Ross and Joe yeah, Hall they, and yeah, Tommy yeah. Phillips. Yeah. It's not like this was, a, you know, yeah. a rap shackle team that went into Montreal. Anyway... They missed the connection to Chicago. You know that story? The train, um, they missed the train to Chicago because they were late getting there to St. Paul, Minnesota. The train that went, uh, that they missed, the last car on the train got absolutely demolished in a train accident. So those men likely would have died <laughs> had they made their connection. Uh, that's one of the neat stories of them going on into Montreal and winning uh, 
the two games. And they might have said, win this one for the Gipper. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we, we, we wouldn't be here talking about the 1907 <laughs> Thistles, I can tell you that. Okay. Um, what year did Hockey Hall of Fame goaltender Chuck Rayner, and I guess Toronto Maple Leaf legend, 1950, lead oh. the Kenora Thistles to the Memorial Cup oh, final? Oh, 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 that's 1940. Is it 39-40? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So good. Yeah. Uh, this guy, this guy has, he's, he's pretty good. Yeah. That's a part of Kenora history that a lot of people, we kind of like to focus on things. I'm like, that's, I think, one of the greatest stories here. Well, here's another that you might be able to help me out with, not to put you on the spot, but did Charlie Rayner have a goalie, uh, or I mean a hockey school? No, Charlie Rayner and Sugar Jim Henry owned a tourist resort, and it was, it's called Hockey Haven Resort. But it wasn't for teaching hockey. It was just no. A, it was a resort. That's where I'm getting confused. Yeah, cause and I know. it and it's on the highway. So whenever, like Glenn Hall talked about exactly when that's, yeah, it's and from that, his that, book. That was a big thing in his life. Yeah. you know that uh, to meet Charlie Prince Rainer and uh, to have those guys give yeah. him the time of day. Yeah. Glenn said instilled a ton of confidence in him. And I thought, well, was it on the ice? It's like the Winnipeg Jets. I always hear stories of Joe Daly mm -hmm. in the WHL A era. Uh, bringing Bobby Hall and some of the guys over to his camp or cottage. Oh, yeah. uh, and the, they built the dressing room, the Western uh, uh, dressing room, a dressing room in the rec center was built specifically for the Jets yeah. of the WHA to have training camp here, but it never happened apparently. Yeah. They, they just didn't have, the ice wasn't good, so they didn't come and skate. But they came here and fished and drank yeah. beer. <laughs> Which is, happens every summer. <laughs> it's, hap it's happening this week, Rick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. This one's a tough one. This right. is this takes you to the next level of uh, okay. of two out of five. Wasn't bad. Uh, name the Kenora native who scored the first goal in Boston Bruins history. Wow, the Kenora native was well. Uh, Sandy Sanderson? <laughs> no, no. No, it's uh, Wilfred Smokey Harris. Oh, okay, so I don't know that history. That's great. Yeah. So what's his story? Uh, obviously, he scored the first Bruins goal. Uh, it's incredible. And yeah. did you tell Don Cherry? Because no, we, 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 oh yeah, <laughs> give me, that'll be for Coach's Corner. Uh, yeah. That's a great story for. Uh, yeah. And Don will probably take credit for it, but. Uh, <laughs> but, but it'll, uh, so what? Uh, well, he's uh, he was one of these kids growing up in Kenora, just like the 1907 Thistles, and he came just after the Thistles won the Stanley Cup, and he was on a team that challenged for the Allen Cup, and he got picked up for the Pacific Coast Hockey League by the Patricks, and. So he played with actually two other Kenora Thistles when the Vancouver Millionaires started up in the Pacific Coast League. And then he had like a 20-year like a career in hockey. Why do they give Freddie Sasakamus then the credit for being the first Aboriginal? Oh, that's the first Aboriginal. Well, he's the first Aboriginal to play in the NHL. Uh, Sandy Sanderson was the first in pro hockey. I see. But what Smoke Harris was... Uh... He, he, he just scored uh, the first goal in Bruins history. Wow. Yeah. I'll have to go through that with you when the viewer isn't getting cross-eyed. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> okay, I was originally going to ask you, because Kenora's uh, can be, you know, Mike Richards, you know, one of the great players of the last decade, uh, you know, won the gold medal and Stanley Cups and everything. This was my original one. And since you got the first three right, I have to give this one. Name the first former Kenora Thistle to win an Olympic gold medal. This one's hard. The but if you read my book, you books, might know. yeah. Uh, wow, I hate to disappoint you because I did read your book, but I, <laughs> that detail or nugget has somehow. Uh, yeah, you tell me. Okay, it's uh, Vic Lindquist. Oh, he was shucks, on the night. He was on yes. the 1932 Winnipeg Hockey Club that yes. won. Yeah. yeah, and he started with the Kenora Thistles. Uh, no, so I skated with a Lindquist. Lindquist last night. I wonder if he's a relative. Probably. Could be, yeah. They're still in the area. Yeah, but yeah, so I should have known that. Yeah. I'll do one last easy one. Name the Kenora native who played on Team Canada at the Summit Series in 72. Gary Bergman. Yes. Yeah, so, and what a player. Uh, just everybody thought the world of Gary Bergman. Uh, and you remember how passionate he was. And oh, yeah. that's the same way Mike Richards played, right? Like Mike Richards, you know, we list all the things he's won. But what I think is a defining characteristic of Richards is he twice was a member of teams that came back from 03 in a series mm -hmm. to win in seven games in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Once with Philadelphia against Boston, he engineered the comeback himself by hitting uh, David Krejci. And that hit in game four turned the series. 
And then, of course, with the Los Angeles Kings, he did it to San Jose. And so Bergman and Canada coming back in 72, yeah. I would liken to that spirit that Richard yeah. showed. And funny part is the other bald-headed defenseman, his nephew lives in Kedora. So Bill White's cousin lives here, our nephew lives here. So there we go. So I'd like to thank you for being in Kenora, and I look forward to the rest of the weekend. Thank you, Rick. Super. symbolic than a K-Town dinner jacket. We were gracious enough to have jackets donated today for the show from Island Girl. Um, we are going to try our best to get as many signatures as we can on these jackets so that they can um, donate the proceeds from an auction to Triple Play here in town, a local organization that helps kids play sports in the area. So shout out to Island Girl. Thank you for the jackets and Hopefully, Don Cherry and Ron McLean will wear them proudly as well. Yeah. Don Cherry is gracious enough to sign the two dinner jackets that Island Girl will be donating to Triple Play for their fundraiser. Looks like good. It looks like my uh, Kenora hat that I wore on Hockey Night in Canada, and I'll wear my jacket and, uh, with pride when I take Blue for a walk in those cold days. Here we go, another autograph for our Triple Play lucky Kinner. Kinner jacket, dinner jacket winner. Ron McLean is gracious enough to give us his signature on these beautiful jackets. about to enjoy some of the Hockey Day in Canada festivities. I yes. know we had an absolute blast today. We're out on the harbor front in front of the beautiful snow sculptures and everybody knows how much hard work goes into these every year. That's right. So That's awesome. thank you to all the competitors that did this. Rick, thank you for being on our <laughs> show today. Oh, you're welcome. It was a big treat. I got to talk to Ron McLean. How was it though, like trading hockey history <laughs> tidbits with the man himself? Well, the thing is, he's just not a talking face on television. He loves hockey, he knows hockey, he studies hockey, so it was great. I asked, I was amazed. He got four out of five of my questions, so I was like, wow, that's great. <laughs> and a huge fan of your book, so congratulations. Yeah, yeah, that's really a, weird. <laughs> that's yeah. a big life accomplishment. Yeah, somebody read them. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Dave, oh. I know you have Whoa. mentioned yes. before we lose you here. I know. Lanny McDonald, Lanny. you're never washing your he, he hands. Sh I shook Lanny McDonald's hand. It was awesome. Lanny McDonald, my wife's favorite. Ha ha. I said him. You didn't. <laughs> and then Don Cherry. What can I say? Don Cherry. I got to meet Don Cherry. I got to touch the cup. I got a press pass. Never had a press pass before. <laughs> this is an awesome day. Come on down all weekend. Hockey Day in Canada. Absolutely. Awesome. I'd have to say I got my son's jersey yes. signed for him, which is going to be a super special family memory for us. That's right. And I got to touch the Stanley Cup, which I never <laughs> thought I'd do in a lifetime. So hey. that was pretty amazing. Yes, fantastic. Come on down. It's a great weekend. Rick, thanks for joining us. It was awesome. Oh, great. Yep. He's, he's knowledge. This man <laughs> is knowledge. I'm getting a Rick app. Everybody needs a Rick app. <laughs> Um, I would like to thank Don Cherry, Ron McLean, of course, Lanny McDonald for being a part of the show today, and all of Kenora for Andy hosting. Andy. 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 Well. Yeah, Andy, Andy was on the show. There you go. Um, great turnout, Kenora. We're very proud of you, and this is a moment in history. It'll, maybe you could write another book about it, Rick. A hundred years from now, it'll be the centennial of Hockey Day in Canada, so it'll be great. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next week.